Hi guys, Jen back again. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Sorry about that. Been a bit busy making cards. Um, and I found this on Pinterest. And sorry, I haven't got the um, link or the name of the lady who did it. Um, but I'll put a link down below the video in the description. Now, how clever is this? For a Rubik's, well, it's a never ending card, and to make it into a Rubik's Cube puzzle, I think is just brilliant. Such a brilliant idea. So, we're going to make that one today, and I won't bore you with um, all the cutting out and everything. I have pre cut everything, and um, but I also wanted to show you um, a a bit of it there's that many never-ending card tutorials out there so you know I'm not here trying to give you a tutorial but give you a tip or two along the way now okay so that's the card we're gonna make so this card is six inches by six inches and so we need four pieces of your base colored cardstock and I used white at six inches by three inches okay so we need four of those and we need to score all of these by placing your cardstock with the longest side sitting at the top of your scoreboard and score it at one and a half inches both ends so rotate it turn it right over and do that so Basically, just one and a half inches in on both sides. One and a half inches. Yep. All right. So do that to four, all four pieces, which I've done. Okay. And now, and it's a real pain because what you've got to do is put tape or adhesive, any adhesive wet or whatever you want. But I find tape's better because it doesn't seep out, um, and it's got to be at the one and a half inch mark here they've got to be covered so if we put them there like that as your card all four corners one and a half square inches of each of those four corners has to be covered with tape well to a certain extent so what we need to do first off I will just go from now go just inside that score line but not on or past it on the inside because we don't want it to stick to any other part of the cardstock so I'm going to do that to both outer edges both top edges now we've got to come down one and a half inches and put our score tape across so what I did I'll get this big board out there I can get the little one in because it'll be a lot easier Okay, so what I did is I put it there on my scoreboard and I can see the one and a half inch mark there so all I did then was take the tape and put a line it just above that one and a half inch mark come over and cut it off just before that score line there so I know now know that that will not stick to the other piece where it shouldn't okay so do the same for here now when we turn it over it's going to come down um, lower so we've got to go an inch and a half up so it's sitting at three inches so we're just going to go just under that one and a half inch mark and there we have and I know you can't see it but um, there's the tape there top and bottom okay on both sides and that's all I do I cover just two strips top and bottom now that looks a bit lower than that one let's just double check now it's going to be fine okay so we do that to just two pieces okay so first off we're going to and it doesn't matter which end because they rotate around and they're pretty much mirrored Top and bottom so that one and that one all 
don't know, some people might not be as fussy as me, but some might. But I just thought that was a, a, a good way of gauging where the one and a half inch mark was without any drama, you know, without worrying too much. So see how quickly that went on? Right, let me um, burnish those and then we'll come back and put it together. Okay, burnished tape, bring back the scoreboard. Now what I'm going to do is remove the tape backing from just the top left corner of one of the pieces. Okay, and this is where you can shove your tape over it's, if it's gone too far over that line. Now I'm going to sit it, place it on the scoreboard so it's flush to the top and the left, okay? Then I'm going to grab one of my other pieces that hasn't got any score tape on it and I'm just going to butt it up against the top and the left and stick it down. Then you'll have that perfectly positioned on that top piece there, okay? Now we need to put the other one on, so let's just rotate it around so it's sitting up that well. Let's take the tape backing off first, might help. Okay, so then your tape's up in this corner up here. So sit it up there, take your other piece that you've scored that hasn't got any tape on it, and Put it up to the top and there. There we go. That's now positioned on there. Flip it over and actually let's, yeah, we need to flip it over. Okay, you see I've got a gap in there. That's fine. It'll help us. It's not always going to work out exact, but it's better than trying to line it up the other way. I'm taking all the backing tape backing off this second piece that we've taped up okay so then what I'm going to do is that the tapes on this side so flip it over and we're going to shove it up there so it's against the top and the side and push it down so then we have our never-ending card so we can get rid of our scoreboard now and we can burnish these folds. So let's now. I like to have the um, the shorter scored areas at the top, with the two squares in the middle, and the two long thin ones at the bottom. Okay. So then I just open it up. I butt them up underneath. If you can see there. But these two pieces here, I want to butt them up and line them up before I crease. So I line them up, butt them up, and then I can push these down and burnish those. Okay, that's that one. That's what we've got so far. And now we want to push these up and these so what I'm going to do is just going to turn it around I'm going to butt them up against each other again line them up and let me just turn this around and make sure it's lined up and stick it down okay and okay so that's your back and then you're back to the front again okay so open 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 and you're done how easy and quick was that now that used to take me probably triple the amount of time that it's just done then so i'm very happy with doing it that way okay so i'm just gonna okay um what i did was I looked at the colours that the lady had on on Pinterest that she had here. I didn't look at what she had inside, but what I did was just thought, right, we open it up and we've got two together here, two together here, two together here. Um, and then open it up again and we've got a complete top there and there, to complete facing there, but these are different. So then open it up and then we've got one complete one there and you've got your 
same colours there and your same colours here. So that's how I did it. Um, on the front, now there are six colours. So you've got your red, green, blue, yellow, white and orange. Now I actually put white squares on there but you don't have to and I don't think I will on this one. And then when I opened it up I left this area here plain. I didn't put any squares on it, white or whatever. So and it was for your greeting inside. And I thought it was brilliant in that you didn't have to add much to it um, because the patterns speak for themselves. So I thought, you know, yeah, why not? Let's go for it. So each square measures one and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'll put up in the description down the bottom how many of each that I used. I'll um, I'll do up a, a a file that shows you the position of the colours when you open each page. Okay. All right. So now I will just start adhering. What I did first to get the um, the design I wanted and you may want to do this and not use what I have and that's fine so all I did was took a um, some removable tape and stuck it down where I think it was going and continue on that way until I was ready to adhere them with the wet glue okay but I know what I'm having so I'm just going to speed this up and shoot through to the end and yeah so basically first off I'll just take that off you can even leave that um, tape on there if you want I do just go over it with your wet glue so really um, your squares on there are just to give you a guide as to where you position your squares so that they all line up okay all right we'll fast forward now Okay, they're all glued down. Okay, so like that. I hope. I think you can get confused with what you've um, glued down and what you haven't. But anyway, so we're at the front page now. The stamp sets I'm using are from well, this one's from Simon Says Stamp. It's called Happy Three by Four Clear Stamp Set, and I'm using the Happy and the Birthday. Now the Birthday's got an exclamation mark, and I want to try and not use that and then the second set I'm using is by clearly besotted stamps and it's the honeycomb um, set and it's got to you on there so I'm gonna have happy birthday to you okay so the happy and I'm going to use uh, onyx black versafine ink birthday to you all right when it dries uh we need to do the inside set um sentiment now yeah, which one was that one right which one, oh okay it's a, again another simon says stamp set 
And what did I put on this one? I put... May your special day be as special as you. Or I could put to the most amazing, spectacular and fantastic person I know. And I think I'm going to use that one instead. This set's called Birthday Messages. It's a um, 3 by 4 set. go to the most amazing spectacular and fantastic person I know that's done all right all it needs doing now is making an envelope for it but I'm sure you guys can do all that so there we go open up open up open up and done very good all right Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.